just waiting to get the good internet there. Oh, that's nice. Hi everyone, welcome to another Monday with Luciana. I'm in here today and I would like to present you my friend Sabrina Rodriguez, which has a master in high performance sports psychology. Hi Sabrina, welcome. Hi Luciana, thank you for having me over. Yes, I'm very happy that we are all here together again for another Monday with Luciana. Yeah. And uh, we can learn from ups and downs. So today we're also going to learn about some downs, I would say, which normally is where we most learn. So last week, in the last Monday with Luciana, we spoke about good jump offs. And what is the difference? What do you think is the difference between the good jump offs and the less good jump offs? Or we can even say the unlucky jump offs. We are just discussing that before. Ne? Unlucky, ha lucky. Yeah, exactly. Ha does luck play a role or not in a jump off? Or is it just technique, tactics, strategy, etc., etc.? But yeah. we'll, we'll get we, into that. We said that it's yeah. everything together. So I would like to tell you that um, as more as I have a lot of victories and beautiful rounds, I also had some bad rounds, which I learned a lot as well. So the most important thing when you have a jump off is to train at home for the jump off because we cannot arrive to the show and you know be so lucky that we want to be at the jump off and we never train the jump off. So that's what we spoke last week about the importance of training with the heart butterfly and get ready for the jump off. And then very, very important when we are the competition day and we want to achieve a jump off, when we get there, we have to make a new strategy for the jump off. So all these things together, lucky strategy, training at home. We said the preparation starts already at home, not only at the showground. Exactly. So that's when we get there. And even sometimes if we give our best, it doesn't get the way we want. And I would like to share today with you two jump offs that has been for me like um, completely um, in different ways. I would say, which I learned big lessons. So we go back now to Herzog and Bosch last year, Grand Slam. And I would like to see if I can show you here one of them, which, um, yes, as you will see, um, maybe here, and then after you can see also uh, in my website and in my Instagram, I had this jump off with Concento, which uh, have a really nice beginning, one, two, going forwards. And then I came to this Rolex Oxra and I really had to turn right, but I couldn't turn and my horse took the next fence in the wrong way. This was a double combination Oxra vertigo, but jumping from the wrong way. Can you imagine this? Did you ever thought about jumping a double combination from the other way? I mean, it's crazy, right? But my horse mastered it in a beautiful way. It didn't even look so bad the way I felt. I felt so bad because I didn't master the right technique on that turn. I, you know, I, I started the combination, you see, and then I wanted to go right, and then he just didn't see my eggs, and he jumped the fence that was in front of him. I mean, he was amazing. Look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> so that was for sure not planned. And what happened? We learn for sure about that and uh, try not to repeat for the next time. What did I learn on that jump off? Sabrina, what do you think as you as a sports psychologist when I came out of that round, how I was feeling and how were my emotions? After the round or why that happened? I think why that happened. That's a good question. Uh, how was your concentration at the time? How was your technique of rollbacks at the time? Because you had a huge rollback. And you turn. I, you turn. And Did uh, you know it was the reason to start the butterfly exercise and the butterfly method to improve my riding in the exactly, U turns? Exactly. So, so, was it out of concentration? Was it uh, lack of uh, training on, on, on U turns or rollbacks to get to the next uh, obstacle? What do you think 
or what what do you remember that happened at that point? It was a, your feeling. It was a really good question because at that day I was changing bits with Concento and I was not sure yet if I would have the control or not with him in the turn. So I changed it exactly on that day in a B class, one meter fifty five class in a Grand Slam, just a Saturday Grand Prix, before the big Grand Prix on Sunday, I changed the beat. So it started already as my preparation was not perfect yet for that kind of class. As I went clear in the first round, I said, oh, it looks good. I think I have a good feeling. So I'm gonna try the jump off, I'm gonna go fast. Although with him is always an issue about a good control. As you could see, uh, it did not work. <laughs> So he wouldn't understand my, my, my signs to turn. Maybe my body on the air was a bit too late. The control, the right ability, it was not good. So as he's amazing horse and brave, he just said, okay, I just keep jumping. And he jumped um, a new fence, which was not in the jump off. So why did that happen? I have to say, first I was already looking to the next fence. So I was going there left and then suddenly my horse went straight and jumped. I mean, my heart like, was beating like crazy and I said, oh my God, I'm going to crash, you're going to fail, something really bad is going to happen. And as you just jump it quietly, easy, out of the combination, I said, oh my God, I'm safe, you know, so. But you, 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 Luciana, you did one of the things that our trainers tell us always not to do. Never try something new on a show. I disagree Agreed. with that. Yes. But our, yes. That's what I'm saying. Most trainers say never try something new at a show. Always try it at home first, see yeah. if it works. And uh, but you went for a big change in a big class. In a big class. And I was very confident. Having yeah, and you were very confident. Yes. So. And I tell you why. Why? Because this bit, which I I decided to ride the horse on that big class in the quite important class. I had ridden him in the year before in October at the Villa Mora uh, tour and there was the bit which I was second in the Grand Prix and seventh in the Grand Prix. Okay. Then I changed it for another bit which I thought would be nice and easier but I didn't have a good feeling. So I said I go back to my old bit. So it was a kind of change but not real change. Oh, okay. So it was okay, okay, okay. for that moment but for sure we are coming from outside season in, uh, indoors, Hertog and Bosch was an indoor, so again, it played a role on the horse that is used to jump with big spaces and that, okay. and then suddenly we come in an indoor and that everything is so small, so everything together. So, what Sabrina said, trainers say don't change bit at the competition, this is good. Try at home, do at home, do some tries. If you have a bit that you already used Tried, sometimes before, yeah. you know it works, you can go for that day, because you know what, one of our challenge is always to find the right bit, to find the right tuning, to find the right control, you know, to find the best and nice ride ability. This is our challenge every day when we go into the ring, right? True. So that's going to play another example of a jump off, which was a completely different, uh, I would say, happening than this one. So this one, I didn't have the best ride ability. So I didn't have the right technique over the fence to show my horse I had to go to the left. But the one I'm going to show you now, I had all of this in control, but something completely different happened. Yeah. So we're going to show to you um, another case uh, last year in Hertogenbosch. In this case, in the Grand Prix, which I was clear and very happy because we're also coming from the outside season. And Vertigo was in top shape, being placed in the two Grand Prix in Villamora. And then we went directly on an indoor Grand Prix, uh, Grand Slam. So really a big challenge for all of us. And you see the jump off is like smoothing all around. I did the turns all short. I lost a little bit of my time now in that turn. You see, I did one strike more and I kind of, you know, get my horse and then I close my eyes I saw that distance from far away and I just went completely out of mind. You can shout at me, you can say, my God, what she did. Yes, like everyone said, oh my God, what is she doing? Yes. So, you see, Why? because we You took a chance, obviously. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I took a chance, but in that moment, in that turn, 
I lost my concentration and the moment. I miss being in the moment. When we say being in the zone, being in the moment, exactly on that moment, nothing else like came in my mind. And I just saw the last fence, the Rolex Oxra. And I said, I go, I just went. I saw the distance, the first distance, but I went like, you know, like crazy, like a, a Western rider. And if I would have gone connected with my horse, horse, like be one with my horse, like I always tell in all my way master classes to be one with your horse and not just like uh, threw it away like a butterfly, like I can do with feet for fun and she would jump. You know, some horses need connection, most of them I would say. I completely lost the concentration, the connection. I lost my horse. What made you lose your concentration? Do you remember? Um, yeah, I, I turned and uh, I saw that first distance. I okay. saw the distance and I said, I have it. I want to win a Grand Slam. I just said, I have to go. And I could have gone, the only thing is just that I, I just went with my body. I just, my body expression and my connection with the horse in that moment Lost. fall apart. We, we are not more connected. Yeah. And that's why, you know, long reins, everything. And then he jumped and he broke his jump and he had the, the mistake behind because I know he's so fast. But if I can tell you now very precise, that happened because already I didn't have a good turn before the vertical there was... Yeah. before the last yeah. fence. So the last fence was a consequence of not having the jump I wanted in the vertical before, because I kind of took his balance away with my hands. I was a little bit like strong in my body and lost the, the balance in the turn. And then I turned and I went. So my advice, what I can give it to you, I'm going to talk about that right now, where we spoke before, is about breathing. Don't forget to breathe. I turned to the last fence and I was not breathing. I was just anxious. I wanted to finish that course. Yeah. And that happened a mistake. What, what can you say about like breathing? Well, I, there's two things I want to add. And uh, many writers ask me about this and I'm going to ask you, Luciana, watch after watching these two videos. What happens with fence number one and the last fence? And how much do you attribute a breathing problem or lack of breathing to what happens, you know, a knockdown on the first fence or a knockdown on the last fence. I will explain maybe from the psychological part or physiopsychological part, uh, how does it impact? But for you as, as an elite top writer, what happens on the first fence and the last fence? Okay, we all know that the first fence and the last fence are most of the time writer's mistake, right? Yeah. People like say it's a bit lucky here, a bit lucky there, and I would say most precise we can write number one and last fence down, it's our job. So um, I think the concentration and the breathing play a really important point at that, that before each class starts, before your round starts, you take a deep breath, and then you start the round but then don't forget to breathe until you finish the round so i remember what one time a mentor trainer said to me um, before the last line or before the last fence take a deep breath that you can you know wake up your brain exactly and then the horse feels your anxiety and then you can both jump more connected exactly and then another tip he can also give it to me about the last fence is always think just in your mind that there is a fence after the last fence so the last fence is not the last fence not crossing the finish line you have another fence to defend after the last fence which makes a really uh, good approach to say i didn't have the last fence down i yeah i had the before the last fence down uh, so it's just a kind of you know it's like working with our mental you know playing around with our mental to be strong jump ups breathing is really important have a good strategy, have your horse in control, the right bit, so the right equipment. Uh, and all these things together yeah. can make you have a good jump off. And as we asked it before, what's the difference between a good jump off and a bad jump off in the end is the feeling. Because we feel so bad after when we did a mistake, right? Yeah. We could have done better, why did I do that? But we cannot go back. We can go back, you know, in that jump off and we can even do better. True. So we have prepared some more questions for you. And um, 
Well, Sabrina? I, I, I sort of, um, I know how you train your physique, your, your uh, body and uh, your mind, but especially I'm going into your body, okay? And I've seen you warming up before a class, and I know you take it very seriously, your, your warm-ups. And I think one of the reasons, or not I think, but I, I know that one of the reasons why there's a knockdown on the first fence is because there's no arousal or activation, body activation. You go into the ring, the same way you can be going to a supermarket. Your body doesn't understand you're gonna jump a class. While when you, of course, warm it up and you activate it, you know, through breathing exercises, stretching out or whatever, and I'm gonna ask you how you do it, uh, your body knows it's ready. It's exactly. ready to yeah. rumble. Um, and that's one of the reasons I see, you know, they enter jump offs like sort of sleepy or, you know, uh, too relaxed or maybe too anxious. Because also over anxiety, okay, yeah. uh, makes our brain segregates cortisol into our muscles, which yeah. you know makes them very tired. Exactly. And sometimes, and I'm sure most of you had this experience before a class or before uh, a jump off, you start yawning and you start getting tired, and it's not from you know lack of sleep. It's, you know, the anxiety kicking in and it's the stress kicking in your body and that makes your brain also tired, okay, and fatigued. So how do you prepare like physically and mentally before a jump off? And memory, I know, plays a great, great, great part in all this. Yeah. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for all the people that have been there with likes and uh, saying, well done, you know, we're talking about jump offs, we're talking about good ones, about bad ones. You can all learn with us. And it's so nice to see that you're there, connected with us, learning with us. And uh, we are trying to be here for you today and answering some of your questions. So how do I prepare myself for a jump off? As I said, it starts already at home. The preparation starts at home. And not only you and the horse together, as uh, I used to train with the butterfly exercises for my jump offs, especially the hard butterfly, which you have now the new My Way Master Classes on my website. You can see anytime how you can train for jump offs, but also with meditation, a personal trainer, getting strong physically, that you get strong mentally, finding the right strategy, talking to your trainer, understanding your horse. Taking a deep breath when you go in the ring and then when you start having your plan in mind, you do a visualization of your jump off the way we want to ride, not only one time, three times. So do a three times visualization before you ride the jump off. One time, one more time, and one more time. And then you're ready to warm up, also think about a jump off, see how the class is going, and then when you go in, Give the signs to your horse, we are in the jump off, not in a normal round, we go for it. Having your strategy also, according to your strategy, if you want to go to a slow clear round, also then you go for a very nice round, control round, and it's also important to know what you want to achieve in that jump off. So jump off in a way is when we can win classes. We want to be good there. We want to make a realization of our work at home, in the course, all together so this is why i love to ride jump ups uh, i'll tell you one one thing um do you know that new information that it's not rehearsed or repeated only lasts in our short-term memory for 15 or 20 seconds at tops okay so if you learn something new like a new parkour a new round for your jump off if you don't repeat it in your head That's at least said. Three times, three times, exactly. Uh, in 15, 20 seconds, it will just disappear, yeah. okay? And by the way, 50% of what our brain holds is yeah. visuals, yeah. it's images. Yeah. Uh, it's not words, it's not lines, it's, it's visuals. What you want to achieve with your course. Exactly, yeah. so that's very important that you know how to, you learn how to train your imaginary yeah. or your visualization 
Uh, many people do it, you know, in different ways. I, I've seen people closing their eyes and, uh, you know, yeah. walking around in circles. I see people with their finger doing it up in the air. Yeah, you can close your eyes, you can clo uh, be quiet, take some time, a deep breath. There are many ways of concentrating. And just before we finish the session today about jump offs, I just like to go about one very important point about breathing again. We think breathing is important for us. Yes, breathing is all. I would say it's maybe the key for our success and for any other sport. Because like with breathing, oxygen, our brain, we have more chances to concentrate on that. One thing that I learned with my riding and was with a horse called Winning Mood, which I love, and it's now being a father, breeding mares, and I have in his life. Um, I had a, a point in my life where I said, why I always had the last fence down with Winning Mood? And I was getting a bit frustrated, you know, what I am doing wrong. Yeah, then in Aachen in the Grand Prix was, uh, we were last to go, was only one double clear, and uh, we you know, we, I had the last fence down with Winnie Mood and many other jump pops which I had the last fence down and many other rounds in Calgary with Fitch for Fun which I also had uh, the last yep. fence down. But one thing just for you to learn as well, breathing, it's also important for the horses. We learned through yeah. our career that Winnie Mood didn't breathe well. He was holding his breath. <gasps> Like in his breast, but I mean, then he, I could feel always at the end of the course, he was getting always so strong and so powerful, but I didn't know why. When we learned that he was holding his breast and he couldn't breathe, we understood why I had many times the last fence down and he was so strong and so anxious at the end of the course because he was not getting enough air. And when exactly. they don't get enough air, they get anxious. So think about you when you also don't get enough air and you hold everything here on your breast and then you get anxious and then you don't see more the right distance, you don't see more what you can do and everything becomes not more automatically and everything became mechanically and it's not more flow there. So one thing it's really important for anything you do in your life, jump offs, riding courses, is the breathing and also think about your horse. In my way master classes you can learn with me and Fit for Fun how to breathe together during your work, during the jumping uh, training session, even in the course. Stop your horse, take a deep breath together with your horse. You will see that can change your life. Small details can make the whole difference. So thank you so much for being with us, Sabrina, and thank all of you. you. Uh, we are so happy to have you live with us on Monday with Luciana. Absolutely, if you have any questions, exactly. shoot guys send to us we were going to answer to you thank you for being with us and we say goodbye now here thank you bye bye the... thank guys, you guys we are here today enjoying the good weather in portugal bye all bye <laughs>